Hey guys, Morgan's Maintenance, episode number 10 of Guess the Trade. So we finally have hit double digits, but first let's talk about episode nine where we looked at three different loadouts, one from Patrick, another from Bruce Lay, and then also Eddie Marufo. And what is it that they did with their tools? Well, Patrick said that he was in security access control. Uh, a lot of people were guessing kind of in that vein. I think I said um, low voltage of some kind in the video last week. Uh, many people were either guessing access control, security, or fire alarm systems or something along that nature, but he did say that he was in access control. Now, Bruce Lay, I guess mechanic, and he is a mechanic, but he said he was a dairy robot mechanic. So I don't care how good you are, I'm pretty sure you probably didn't guess that. So that is what he did with his tools. And then Eddie Marufo, I don't think he commented in the comment section and said what he did. But in his email to me, he told me that he was a farrier full-time, and then within the last few months, he's kind of started his own little handyman business on the side. Uh, so that's what he does with his tools. So that's last week's loadouts. This week, we got three more that we're going to look at. We're going to look at Chris Conway, Nanad Stokic, I hope I said that right, and then also Muzzy Nat. So we've got three different loadouts. I think there's a Vito bag, a Vera bag, so or a Vera bag. I get Vera and Vera. Sometimes I mix those up. And then also there's a bag that I'm not real sure what it is. I can't tell if it's a Milwaukee, maybe a Husky. I'm not real sure, but we'll try to figure that out as we go through these loadouts. But the first person we're going to look at is Chris Conway. He's got a Vito Pro Tech Pack LT, and he did tell me in his email. He didn't tell me what he did, but he told me that his bag weighs 19 kilograms or 41 pounds. If you remember a few weeks back or a few episodes back, I think it was him that suggested that maybe people could include their weights of their bags as well because sometimes that's helpful maybe to help you decide is this bag right for me because sometimes you'll look at a bag and think man that holds a lot of tools that would be the perfect bag for me but once you realize it weighs 40 to 50 pounds you're like no I don't want to really carry that I need to find a smaller bag so I think that is useful information again I'm not saying you have to give it to me but if you do I will share it on here but let's go ahead and look at Chris Conway's Vito Pro Pack Tech LT. So we get into his first picture again. You can see the outside of his bag, Vito Pro Pack, up here at the top, and then also a Tech Pack LT. I personally don't think I've ever seen one of these in person, or I, this may even be the first loadout I've seen of these. I'm not sure if I've seen any of these on uh, YouTube or anything like that. So looking at the outside of the bag, he's got obviously a pair of what looks to be, to me, Klein handles over here. Could be Knipix, but he's got some Klein ones for sure over here. And again, we're just looking at the setup of his bag at this point. We'll see the tools here in just a little bit. Uh, bit holders, magnet, also a pair of Knipix electrician shears over here. Uh, we go on to the next picture, which is the front side of that bag opened up. And we'll glance and kind of go through just looking at his setup. He's got some screwdrivers, some wrenches, a knife, a couple different things up in here in the top. And then also down here in the bottom, he's got some testing equipment. Looks like an infrared thermometer. A Fluke 117, another Fluke within a case, probably a clamp meter, some wrenches. Uh, so again, just taking a look at the inside of his bag there. And then this Tech Pack LT also has some pouches up here in the front. So just to give you an idea on this bag, because again, I don't know that I've ever seen this bag. Uh, looking at, it looks like the back side. Uh, he's got some kind of a case up here along with some wrenches or adjustable wrench. A Klein looks like a combo driver right there, the 731. And then he's got some other things here, small precision screwdrivers, little pry bar. Uh, also runs a Milwaukee uh, M12 of something. Looks like possibly impact at the moment, but maybe we'll see here in just a minute. And then he also has a Milwaukee Rover light as well. Uh, does, in, does have some equipment lockout tagout tags. Uh, so sometimes that will help you in your decision making along with a lock over here, some different tapes, bits. Uh, also, we look in the background. Sometimes I miss stuff like that. It uh, looks like he's got some gloves that have the grip on them as well. And then over on this side, I can't really make out much to tell you what any of that is. So that's the back side of his bag. Uh, going on to the first picture here, or the first picture of a blowout, and this might be, uh, there's another one after this, so I think this is the that front side of the bag that we looked at. Uh, so we've got some needle nose of different sizes, along with a small pair of cutters, Irwin Unibit. He's also got, uh, looks like, I can't tell what that is in there, it looks like maybe some jumpers or something like that, maybe the mag, I bet that's a magnetic jumper is what that is. It's got mag in the name, right there's a name on it. Uh, also got some Megalock, 
some hand sanitizer, a cabinet key as well. Here's some different, uh, looks like some 3M of the wire nuts. Those are decent wire nuts. And then the, also some Wagos, the inline connectors, uh, a few different, uh, different hardware box basically. He's got a few different screws and fasteners in there as well. Uh, looks like a Burndy. I'm not sure what that is uh, as far as I'm not heard of that brand anyways. I don't know what would be inside of that. So somebody on this channel I'm sure knows. Uh, there's a magnetic stud ball. I don't know if that's the Racketeers or if it's a different version. Uh, it looks a lot like the Racketeers, but there's several knockoffs of that. I just had that in a tool haul video, but there's several different versions of that. Uh, also here is looks like maybe a wago connect tool like the lever tool wago sells a specific one it's got that same kind of lever on the end but maybe that's used for something specific again i'm not real sure on that at the moment uh, a bunch of different uh ratcheting uh different uh wrenches here looks like brand on it i can't really make that out this one's closer to see it says professional I can't tell exactly what the brand is on it, but they are SAE, it looks like, as far as there's five eights. Um, well, here's a 10 millimeter, it looks like. So he's got a mix of metric and SAE. Here's a small pry bar, also some like service style type wrenches, a pair of vice grip over here, like a needle nose head, a mirror, also, a, oh, what are these scissors called? They're like what the hospitals uses I, I can't think of what the name of them are off the top of my head but they are really handy as far as for gripping on the stuff uh, somebody uh, probably bring that up somebody's gonna have to name that off for me I, at the moment i'm drawing a blank uh, also has some strippers and crimpers i'm not sure the brand on that vote claw a pair of lineman pliers with the crimper as well small wire brush and a torpedo level uh, also a fluke 117 we could see that in the front He's also got a Klein ratcheting stubby multi right there, a, a infrared thermometer, again another flute meter right here, or at least I assume it's a meter. It could be a bunch of different test leads or something like that, and that's just how he stores them. Maybe we'll see something here in a little bit that will show us something different. Uh, also has some other insulated tools right here as far as for grabbing live electricity, and there's a Weeha, it looks like driver, a uh, utility knife, small pipe wrench, also a Klein tool screwdriver of some kind, but looks more so like it might be some kind of a specialty Klein tool. I'm not sure what that is. That looks like an old handle, so that's probably an older tool. A pair of channel lock pliers. Also another set of Allen keys there. A Weeha security bit collection. And then a Klein tools adjustable wrench. And then also a Craftsman as well. I think I've caught everything uh, on this picture here. We'll go to the next one which is the back side of his bag, I think, as far as what was back there in the back. Uh, so he's got a whole test lead kick right here uh, from, I'm not sure if there's a brand on that. So maybe you could uh, let us know what that is, Chris, as far as the brand, because it looks like you've got quite a few different options right there for test leads. I'm interested in seeing what that is because sometimes it's nice to buy a whole kit of things like that, but you got to find out if they're you know, compatible with the meters that you're using. And I'm assuming that they are compatible with Fluke since that's what his meters were. Uh, dropping down here, he's got a Klein Tools. I don't know if that's an infrared thermometer. Yeah, therm I mean, thermal imager, that's what I meant. Yeah, so it's the TI-250 thermal imager. There's his Milwaukee Rover light, along with a couple of long bit adapters. One of them looks like DeWalt. The other one looks like possibly Diablo. And then he has the quarter inch impact driver m12 and then he has also the klein flip socket on the 14 and one adjustable so he has made the super screwdriver hasn't bought the 20 and one small brush uh, also has a klein screwdriver looks like a that's that ecx or the combo bit is what klein calls them right there and then he also has a klein looks like something wrong along the lines of 11 and one another Rastal or Rastel uh, adjustable wrench. Also, something that is the Southward MPXS 26. So, I'll have to look that up and see what that is. A little bit longer pipe wrench. And then, also, it looks like another pair of channel locks. A Honeywell burner control. And then, also, a loop simulator uh, professional. So, that's probably for finding shorts 
or things like that. So I'm pretty sure that's his last picture. There's his name, so it is. So there's the back side of his bag. Take one last look at that one. And then we're going to go back to the front side over here and take another look at that one to see what it is that you think that he does with all these tools right here. And then as far as what do you think that he does with them and what do I think that he does with them? Again, he didn't comment and tell me. I did go check the emails. He actually said, I wasn't sure if you wanted me to tell you. If you want me to, I will. And if not, I'll just let you guess. So I'm going to guess somewhere in the HVAC field, just mostly because of you've got that uh, Honeywell burner control. Also, the kind of loop simulator, I would assume to find shorts, all your different test leads. But with the meters that you have, I'm kind of leaning towards more an HVAC instead of electrical. But again, it could be certain different things. Who knows? Uh, I'm just guessing with that. That would be my guess. But I want you to guess what does Chris Conway do with these tools down below. I'm interested to know how you like that Tech Pack LT. I think that's a tool bag that, again, I've not seen a lot of. I haven't seen a lot of just loadout videos on YouTube from anybody. I haven't seen any other loadouts. So I'm interested in your feedback on that. I'm also not sure, is that a backpack? I couldn't see it anywhere in your picture. I have to look up that bag. I don't even know anything about it. So how do you like it? Because some people might be interested to know that fact. And then there was a few tools in there that I'm not sure what they were uh, because they were packaged in. Like what's inside your fluke uh, case? It looks like a clamp meter case. Do you have a clamp meter in there? Do you have something else? Uh, let us know some of those down below. And if you've got any questions for him, ask that as well. And then make sure you guess. What is it that you think Chris does with these tools that he has? Guess that down below. But now that gets us into the second person, which is Nanad Stokic. I, I hope again that's what I'm saying. He told me that he's from Serbia. I believe that it is in his email. Again, I think I kind of have an idea what he does based on the email that he told me anyway. So I'm not going to guess on his. That's up for you to guess. He did tell me that his bag weighs 25 kilograms or 55 pounds, so quite a heavy bag. We'll take a look at that and you see if you can guess what he does with these tools. So we're going to start out looking at the inside of his bag. He doesn't have any with this uh, bag closed. And again, I'm not real sure what brand bag this is. I'm not sure if it's Husky, Milwaukee, what it might be. But again, I think he's from overseas, so it might be even a bag that I know nothing about. And there might be several tools in this bag you know, that I'm not going to know, but many of you might know. Uh, but we'll take a look. And again, he's got all these really well blown out here in a little while. So we're not going to spend so much time looking in the tools here. But to give you an idea of why his bag weighs 55 pounds, again, you can see how many tools that he's got stuffed in this thing. Uh, so to get an idea, again, he's got even a level Swedish pipe wrench in there as well. Several different like scissors, lots of different screwdrivers from PV Swiss, Vera, looks like uh, maybe Philo or something there. A bunch of different ones. Uh, so taking a look at what all he's got in the front side of his bag. He's even got a, looks like a pipe vise, little micro five, or maybe that's probably a 10 inch back there. Uh, so looking at the out or the inside of the main part of his bag, I would assume. Take a look at that. We'll go to the next picture. This is probably the other side of the bag. So it looks like it has a tool side. And then this side, he's got more of for his paperwork and pencils and things like that, along with all his writing utensils. He's got both styles of the Pika, the fine lead, and the 3030. Uh, there's more of a green ink zaw, also a Knipix knife and a fast back. Uh, so lots of tools that I know what they are, even though he's from somewhere else. So that's always interesting to see. I'm not real sure what's going on up here in this, but again, we're going to see all these here in just a second. Uh, also has a glove holder over here on the side, a couple different tape measures. Uh, so again, just right off the bat, Nanad, again, I hope I'm saying that right. He's also got several tools back here in the background on a pegboard. But I'm interested to know what brand bag this is because there might be some people looking for something along these lines. So if you could share that with us, that'd be awesome. Uh, getting into this picture here, again, we'll look at this. He's got them basically zoomed in in quadrants here in just a second. But here's an overview of all the tools that are in that bag. Uh, you can also look back there in the background. He's got some lumber. Uh, he's a person who keeps a lot of wood, it looks like, left over or pulled out from jobs. Uh, he's got grinder wheels. Also, he apparently works out over here with his uh, weights and things like that. A welder's mask along with some gas of some sort. So a lot of different things going on. And again, here is an overview of looking at all the tools that are in there. And we're gonna zoom in on them here in just a second as we go to the next picture. So next picture is that left side of the table. 
He's got a clamp, also a large hammer. I'd say that does that adds the quite a bit of the weight to his bag right there. That's probably a lot of the pounds as it sits. Uh, he's got some uh, aerator tools as far as for taking off for a faucets aerator. Uh, also has a I uh, can't tell what the brand on that one is. Something tools number five, like a wire stripper of some sort. Uh, also has a crimper, some uh, Knipex fully insulated needle nose pliers, a south wire non-contact voltage tester, several Vera uh, insulated screwdrivers. I've not seen the ones that are all red like this. That's kind of neat. And then he also has some, looks like Unor or Union, one of the two uh, insulated screwdrivers as well. Also has a voltage detector small screwdriver. That's one of those where you stick that into a socket and it allows you to basically uh, see if there's voltage on those and then some Weha insulated pliers as well. Again, he's also got a Swedish pipe wrench. I'm not sure what brand that one is also. And then he has a uh, Uni, it's U-N-I-O-R is what it looks like, which is what brand those screwdrivers were. Uh, so maybe again that's something that's pretty common in his area uh, here's something that looks like the pipe vice i'm not sure if it is the pipe vice brand but that's what it looks like it looks like that's the 10 inch version of that uh, i'm not sure sure what that is right there looks like a number eight uh, that's what i'm pointing at anyways i'm not sure what that is or what that's for he's got a cold chisel uh, he's also got a pick set a scraper uh, some allen keys right there torx version and then also looks like a metric set he's got a pair of Godore uh, channel lock tongue and groove style pliers pump pliers also a pair of Knipex Cobras the Knipex ones are 300s it looks like so those are 12 inch and then he's got a Baco uh, adjustable wrench with that slim line or at least it looks like a Baco to me uh, and then again he's got more Cobras some more pliers wrench he's got a green handled pliers wrench I wish that they would come out with uh green handles on i've seen that on several people's uh Knipex tools i don't know if it's a thing in certain areas or if it was a limited edition thing but it wouldn't bother me if Knipex did do some other color handles besides just red so that whenever you put your tools in your tool bag with the handle sticking up you know if you bought green pliers wrenches and then red cobras it would make it a little bit easier to know which one was which when you went to grab into your bag so that would be something i would like Knipex to do uh, in the future uh, I'm sure that they're not going to listen to me, but that's something I would like. Let me know if that's something that you would like as well. I'd like to see that happen. Uh, but getting back to his tools, uh, again, he's got, looks like some faucet type wrenches over here for like valve stem type things and stuff like that. Also some more pliers. I think as we get to the next picture, it's going to help us see these that are on the right side of the table. Yeah, here's down the middle. So we were starting here where these, uh, all these uh, wrenches and things are and we'll continue to go from there so he's got a pry bar a couple of plastic pry bars as well and then here's another pry bar wire brush a file he's got a ratchet and then he also has a 19 miller and 13 millimeter uh, ratchet style wrench as well we go down he's got a right angle adapter and then again more Godor pliers that's a brand again I don't have any of those He's got a pair of the cobalt cutters from Knipex, also the hammer style end cutters. Those are some of my favorite uh, prying pliers from Knipex. And then if you haven't watched any of my videos, those make a good small hammer for your tool bag. So you, it's always the hardest thing to fit into a small tool bag or even a regular tool bag is a hammer. And if you don't just use one for framing and all those kinds of things, if you just need something to be able to tap on something, that's a good pair to buy to be able to use for that. That's what I use them for that works significantly well for me. So you might want to check those out. But getting back to this, also the twin grips. And again, we've got more bits, sockets, all those things as we scroll up through here. I'm going to go to the next picture and see how much of these we're seeing in that next picture as well. Yeah, so this is the final picture, I'm pretty sure. No, he's got one more uh, past this one. So... Uh, twin grips. He also has the Snap-on LN47 ACS uh, Talon grips. Phenomenal pliers as well. And then it looks like a Warmax or Womax or something extended reach needle nose. Uh, some banding strip. Another brush. Some scissors. 
PB Swiss screwdriver, Godore screwdrivers. Uh, man, he has a lot of tools in this bag. Uh, some different bit attachments, small Weehaw stubby, uh, red, blue, and black looks like electrical tape, jab saw, chisel, uh, some Loctite, also some WD-40, some snips, uh, and then that's all on this picture. And then here's the final picture as far as the tools that he has. And we've got a, a square over here, also a Sola uh, level. I'm trying to see if I can see a size. Looks like 20 something or other. I'm not sure. Our 40 centimeters uh, is his level size that he's got down in that bag. Also carries a Stanley pouch on his belt. So I would say he probably surely takes some of these tools out of this bag and puts them into that pouch and uses it like that so he doesn't carry this bag around with him all the time. So also has a multimeter right there. I can't tell what the brand is on that. And then he also has a park side uh, laser distance measure. Also, it looks like a cross line laser level. There's his hardware box if you want to see what kind of screws he has in there, if that will help you out in any way to guess what it is that he does. Scrolling on down, he's got a light of some sort. Again, a Sola uh, ruler, basically a foldable ruler. Some calipers there. Parts tray. Uh, painter's tool. Also a putty knife or a... Yeah, drywall knife however you want to look at that there's all his writing utensils uh, so he's got picas ink zoles, uh also a pipe deburring tool uh, a couple different tape measures an eight mil an eight meter and a three meter a couple different sola uh, torpedo level and then a small level and then he's got a milwaukee fastbacks and then there's the knipix uh, i think it's called the Cuttix or something like that or the Cuttix might actually be that pipe cutter I can't remember what the actual name is for that Knipix knife but I've got it and I actually like it so there's the last picture of his tools again if we go back and scroll through these just slowly and let you see those and then we'll get to that first picture that kind of has them if you want to pause it zoom in scroll around that all that you want to and then take yourself a guess again at what Ninad and I guess Ninad I don't know how you say it again I'm sorry and apologize if I say that completely wrong Guess what it is that he does with these tools. I'm not going to guess on this one because he kind of told me in his email. Uh, so I'm not going to guess, but he's got a lot of different tools, a lot of tools in that bag. I'm amazed at how many tools fit inside that bag. I mean, there's no wonder that it weighs 55 pounds. I wouldn't want to pack that all day long, but again, maybe he uses his pouch and he just uses this bag to store those things. And then whenever he's doing whatever job it is that he's doing, he pulls tools out of his bag. That, that would be my suggestion to you. If you're not doing that, that would be a good idea because that 55 pounds, maybe you're younger. Uh, you're not the age that I am. You eventually get to a point where you don't want to pack that 55 pound bag all the time. So let us know in the comments below if you've got any questions about his tools. I'm sure there's some of them there. In fact, I know there's some of them there that I didn't have any idea what they were. But again, I know he's from another country, so I expected that. I expected there to be some tools that I'm not sure what they are, but I'm sure some of you all know. But comment down below if you've got questions about tools and then guess what you think that he does with these tools as far as his line of work that he does on a daily basis with those. So I appreciate you sending that in. But now let's get to that third loadout, the final loadout, which is Muzzy Nat, I believe is what it's going to be anyways. Uh, he's got a Vera bag. So this is going to be a Vera bag, tote, box. I'm not sure what you're going to call this. I've not seen one of these as well. So it's going to be the first loadout of that. But let's go ahead and get into his tools and see if we can figure out what he does with those. Now he's only got three pictures, but he does have his tools blown out in just a little while. So again, just looking at his bag here, again, it's a Vera. I don't know, again, if you want to call this a bag, a box, a tote, whatever you want to call this, this is his setup with that. And again, looking at that, it looks like he runs DeWalt. He's got the power stack. It looks like batteries over there. Also some more Vera tools up in here in that top corner. Uh, so taking a look at that right there. Here it is opened up so you can kind of see on the inside. So his front pouch opens up. He's got more Vera uh, as far as, I don't know if those are the Jokers, uh, as far as do they call all their wrenches like that Jokers. I've seen the ones that have like the kind of head on the top of it that as you move it, they kind of adjust to the, I've not seen these, so I'm not sure if that's what those are called either. But again, he runs the DeWalt Impact 20 volt with power stacks, lots of Knipix, Vera, also some Quinn tools up in here, Pika. Uh, so taking a look at that setup right there at what he's got 
But we get to the final picture here of his tools blown out. He's also got a couple kitties or a couple cats in the picture and his cats are probably a lot like my cat and that if you put something new out, so he's got his tools laid out here and they're thinking, I guess this is probably something that you want us to sit on. That's probably what they're checking out. But over here is his bag and it also looks like it comes with some sort of a pouch that fits down in it that he can pull in and out. But we're going to go left or right and there's another pouch back there. Uh, so let me know in the comments below if any of you use this Vera box bag tote as a setup. I've, again, I've not seen this. Uh, maybe Millis Construction has had something along the lines of this a long time ago, but I didn't pay much attention to it. So I'm interested if anybody else has something like this. If you find it very useful, drop that in the comments below. But again, getting back at his tools over here on the left, he's got a socket set. Looks like it's a metric socket set. Uh, from Vera as well. That's another compartment that probably fits within that bag. He's got a pry bar up here. Also a Vera, uh, some sort of a driver or uh, I don't know what that is. The one be before the hammer style right there. And I thought about buying that hammer style as my small hammer for my tool bag before I bought the Knipex, uh end pliers with it. But I use those to pull out nails as well. So it's kind of a double feature for me, but I'm not sure what that is right there. I've not seen that tool. And there's the Vera all black demolition screwdriver. That's the one that almost any loadout that we've had that's had that there's been several of you comment i know matt hmm has several times and he's like you cannot destroy that screwdriver doesn't care what you throw at it and so anytime somebody mentions to me in a comment hey do you recommend a demolition screwdriver in fact somebody did that not too long ago i say every time this is what i use but i'm just telling you based on feedback that people's giving me that's why i always appreciate you all sharing your feedback with me because it allows me to answer people's questions i will give them my opinion but i will say but the majority of people whenever they recommend things to me on this channel they recommend this and again that just helps people get a better idea but that screwdriver right there has been one that people have just raved about for a demolition screwdriver so getting back into this he's got his own version of the super screwdriver with the klein flip socket in, in that Vera bit holding screwdriver. Also, there's those wrenches right there from Vera. He has a pair of Knipex Cobras right there, along with a pliers wrench. He has the Knipex Smart Grip and then a small pair of Cobras as well. He also has that Baco uh, adjustable wrench with that small thin line jaw right there. I've got a channel lock version of that that I use and I really like that option of having that jaw uh, because it allows you to uh, basically if you've got to use two wrenches one for a hold back and one for a regular it's a lot easier to fit that wrench onto something else with another wrench than it is to use two adjustable wrenches so if you don't have one of those with that thin profile jaw i've got a channel lock when i really like that again baco i've had that recommended to me as far as just their adjustable wrenches all together several times you might want to check into that one but that is a very useful tool that if you don't have one of those yet you may want to pick one of those up but getting back into this he's also got a tool check plus in imperial and then he's got over here as we go on over i'm going to scroll down here he's got another vera set and i think again all these different things work within his bag with the velcro and all that so it's really a whole tool kit and again, I'm interested, Muzzy Nat, if uh, what your how has this been working out for you? And again, you told me what you did in your um, email, and I'm sure it works out well for you. But I'm just curious if you're really pleased with your purchase because I'm sure it was pretty expensive uh, to buy the whole setup, just because I know how expensive Vera tools are. So if you bought this all as one kit, no telling what it cost. Uh, but are you happy with your purchase? Basically, I guess is what I'm asking. So. Uh, another pliers wrench down here and also a looks like a probably multi-tool of some kind i'm not real big on those anymore as far as i don't know enough about them to be able to guess what that one is i don't know anything about those snap-on magnetic uh, uh non-marring type surface type thing i really like those over a parts tray uh, here is a foldable light of some kind not sure the brand on that also a flashlight magnetic pickup tool, ink saw, a Pika 3030, eight foot uh, crescent um, tape measure, a Quinn inch and a half putty knife. Uh, again, here's some Knipex tools as well, a pair of flush cuts, needle nose, and the twin grips and the comfort grip. 
and then also some barrel screwdrivers he looks like he's probably got the laser tip on there those are great he's got a couple of phillips and a slotted there's the knipix knife right there uh, again and then we have some dewalt 20 volt it looks like he's got a half inch impact so for someone to carry that over a standard impact that might be a hint to you on maybe something along the lines of what he does but even if, even with that my guess is you're not going to guess it uh, based upon i again i know so i'm not going to say uh, but he's also again got a uh, usb charger that works with his batteries and then over here is another vera bit uh, set right there along with it looks like probably a half inch extension to put onto his impact as well so again there's all his tools right there on the table along with his cats and his bags that are open and empty so take one last look at those and then guess what it is that you think Muzzy Nat does with these tools in his line of work. And again, I know, so I'm not going to guess. And this is probably going to be a hard one for you to guess. So you got to think outside the box for you to be able to get it exactly anyways. It's going to be a hard one for you to guess. But you might be able to guess something in the realm of it anyways as far as what you think he does with these. So again, my questions for him would be, how well do you like that whole wear a kit set up? Is it working out well for you? Uh, and are you, do you feel like whatever it costs you, again, I, I'm sure it was expensive if it all came within that box all at one time. No telling what that price tag was at the very beginning. Do you feel like it's really good bang for your buck? Do you really like that? So let us know that in the comments below. But maybe you've got questions for him about tools. Or if not, you can at least guess what it is that you think he does with these tools. Make sure to comment that down below as well. But that's the three that we're going to look at today. So we got Chris Conway, Nanad Stokic, and then also Muzzy Nat. So guess down below what you think any of these three do with these tools and their line of work. See how well that you do. And then we'll talk about it on the next time whenever we get together for episode 11. So... Hope this video was useful. Hope you guys still enjoy it. Uh, let me know that in the comments below as well. But as always, stay safe. Have a blessed day. I'll see you on the next video.